you know what? I want that. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I'll have to do all that over again. Because I didn't set my recap. That was kind of fun watching the photos out anyway. <laughs> so we can try it again. B U R D. You're missing the nail. L Burley, you're right. L <laughs> Burley. S O N. Is this put Burleson Heritage. You don't have to well, be fancy. Can, it fits in there fine. <laughs> Get my space bands here. Space band. H. E R I T A G E Burleson Heritage Second Space Band As many as you'd like to print. Okay. Or cast, I should say. I, some technical specifics about casting a lot of, of slugs all at once or very quickly and you know if I do recasting I'll have it I'll check it out and make sure that it's not uh, you know uh, develop a problem what happens is if you run a lot of slugs it gets very hot the mold gets hot and uh, you know you, you start getting uh, that honeycombing effect because the lead just simply hasn't had time to solidify. Yeah. And uh, you also run into a problem with your mouthpiece. We don't have a, what they would call a good lockup. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, good contact between your mold and the mouthpiece. Then, uh, and, and of course, to couple with good venting of the mouthpiece, then you start running into uh, as irregularities, you know, and uh, uh, a less than desirable uh, match between the surface of the mold and the mouthpiece, and that can lead to something called a back squirt, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's just that, you know, it's, it can lead to bigger things. You know? Well, I've found in cleaning the machine in Burleson a lot of areas where there's lead that's dried up on sure. pieces of the machine, yeah. and you have to wonder, well, was that an accident, or what happened to make it that way? Exactly. Replenish 
replenish the the uh, the lead. So I'm going to take a couple of these show-off plugs and drop in. But a lot of shops, you know, we don't have a remount furnace, and mm -hmm. things that what they do is they just feed the slugs back into the machine, and that's not really a good idea because you have a problem. If, you know, if you're actually, you know, casting a lot of slugs, uh, you know, you have the the fact that the, the metal loses its tone, you know, by virtue of, of the oxidizing and drossing, and so you end up with the less than desirable mix between your antimony tin and lead, mm -hmm. and you lose that percentage. Um, you know, it's also something to keep in mind if you ever get your linotype up and running. Uh, you don't want to just buy anything off of uh, the uh, the internet. You know, because you know you have different percentages mm -hmm. of the antimony and tin and the pro possibly other impurities. You know, foundry type is really bad about that. You never want to put foundry type into a, a slug casting machine. It's the, the mix is entirely. Uh, uh, non-optimum, and you'd end up getting a lot of dross inside of the uh, uh, dross buildup inside of the, the mouthpiece, and foul it up, and you end up having to clean it all up later on. So, uh, don't ever do that. Don't ever, you know, if, if, you know, assuming you ever get to a point where where, where you're casting with your machine, don't uh, don't feed in uh, any kind of hand type or or monotype or or jump metal off of the internet. You know, kind of you know, I see a lot of it still on eBay for fifty dollars. They'll have, you know, a hundred pounds of quote unquote linotype lead. Yeah, well, that, that is, like I say, the metallurgy isn't there. They, they call it linotype lead. It's not, you know, in, in probably mm -hmm. a certain percentage of of, of the, the sales that, that you see. I'm not saying it is or isn't. It's just that you know, if you don't know, you kind of have to doubt it. I'm gonna put up these mats and. Uh, We'll, I'll cast off a couple more, and then we'll call that uh, a day if it's okay. Sure. I'll have to tell uh, Todd that uh, we can't. That he's going to have trouble uh, running the thing for a demonstration.